2,000 miles away in middle America, a small town is dealing with the ramifications of that exact same fight. Portsmouth, Ohio, was once known as the pill mill capital of America. The state of Ohio has the highest overdose death rates in the nation. There's a new documentary premiering tomorrow night. It follows Army veteran Dale King as he comes home from a deployment overseas in the Middle East to find his hometown destroyed by fentanyl. Spent two deployments to Iraq and then came back home to a town I didn't even really recognize. It was ravaged by an opioid epidemic. Yeah, this looks about as sketchy as you uh, described it. Course of Ohio had the highest per capita pain clinics in the country. There's nothing on the street today that doesn't have fentanyl in it. Dale decided to fight fentanyl with fitness. He started a CrossFit gym, and some of his clients there are former addicts who say exercise and rehab changed their lives. Joining us now is Army veteran and CrossFit gym owner Dale King. Good to have you back on the show. You talked in the documentary about how you did not recognize your own hometown of Portsmouth when you got back from Iraq. What did it look like? Growing up, when I left in the mid in the late '90s, there wasn't this problem. Uh, and while I was gone for for a little under a, t a decade, uh, pills had came in by literally the millions. Dozens of pain clinics had opened up, uh, and as more and more businesses like that opened up, more and more places shut down as more and more people got addicted and flooded the streets with crime. And it was just devoid of of all really life and hope. You saw people everywhere, you say, I mean, who were struggling in the throes of addiction because it wasn't, wasn't just, it wasn't just a front row seat on the shell of a town, your hometown. It was also a front row seat into the desperate battle that so many addicts wage uh, in search of the next fix, in search of trying to get together and to get, get, a, get, you know, get better, in search of relief. Tell me about that, that part of it as well and how you got that idea that maybe you could do something. You know, it, it came from a really good friend of mine who uh, who attended my gym at the time. And he one day came to me and he said, hey man, like CrossFit has been instrumental in my own personal recovery. Uh, I'm gonna take a job on the, working as general counsel for the counseling center. And I would love if your staff could come over and give CrossFit classes to our clients. I think it would fill a unique void that a lot of treatment centers miss out on, and that's just the physical community-based component of, uh, of offering an alternative therapy in the form of fitness. Uh, and, and I jumped at the chance, and this was in 2018. And since then, it's been a front row seat to hear people's stories, understand, and that's the key, is not just, as I did, I cast a judgment on them before I knew them, but be willing to have a conversation and understand how they got there. And that can completely change your viewpoint on somebody that's struggling with addiction. How many people in your CrossFit gym now are people who are sober or clean in recovery? Well, just the load of employees that I have, we have around 10 or 11 folks that are in recovery. And we're now talking four, five, three years of, of clean time. Um, we actually just had two uh, a week ago become certified uh, trainers that will now be able to coach other people going through uh, addiction. Um, I want to play another clip from the documentary about why this actually um, works and why um, this sort of small town strong idea that you came up with um, helped people really sort of dig down. And we're, it's important to note, it's not just CrossFit training that's getting these people off right. drugs. It's, there's other therapy, there's detox that you have to go through, but how it plays an important component in it all. Let's take a look. At some point in your life, you weren't afraid to die. Don't be afraid to live right now. This is Hillbilly Rehab. Exercise has clearly been identified as a tool that can be used in the recovery process. Come on, Sarah. You've been here before. It's not just, oh, we got an addict on our team. No, Sarah's on my team. I'm a person. If there's anything we know, it's suffering. But because you know suffering, you know how you can heal. What do you think you've learned about the opioid crisis and those who struggle with it, Dale, as a result of doing the kind of work you're doing? 
understanding the trauma on what somebody goes through to get them to that point in their life that they're reaching for stuff like opioids and fentanyl to numb that pain. Um, and then from that, being able to relate that to myself, who unfortunately have not uh, gone through substance use disorder, but not looking for the difference between us, but looking for what makes us the same. And once we find that, then you just realize, hey, this, this is my buddy, my cousin, my brother, my neighbor that needs help. And if I have any capacity to do that, it's, it's my obligation to do so. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.